you know, taking yeah. care of business. So I'm really excited to meet with you today. First of all, I want to yeah. make sure that our audio connection is clear because I know you're coming out of Bali, correct? Yep, correct. All right, everyone, how are we doing today? So I'm here with Ari. He's coming out of Bali, Indonesia. He's a singer-songwriter and a record producer. How are you doing, Arif? Good. How are you? I'm doing really well. It's a great pleasure to get to speak with you today. Yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. What's it like being a singer-songwriter in uh, Bali, Arif? Can you talk to me mm-hmm. a little bit about this? Um, actually, I met music accidentally. Uh, for about 10 years ago, uh, I have a dream. I wanted to be a chef. I want to have a cul- culinary business. And about 11 years ago, uh, actually for about uh, 2010, I get poisoned by a stranger. And I had a coma in three weeks. And when I woke up, I lost my sight of sense completely. Uh, it was literally, I lost my sight of sense. It was literally, I couldn't see normally, actually, because uh, my, I, because uh, the poison damaged my eye nerves. Uh, so now, uh, fortunately, I can see again, but uh, in American, it will be 80%. I can see, but not that clear. So what was it that damaged your nerves? What poison was it? It was opium. Opium. Say it was opium, but you it, you took but the it opium. Was in, no, I, I don't took the opium. Um, so I was in a train. I was in a trip to Jakarta from uh, Central Java from my uncle's house. So I went back to uh, Jakarta. Back then I was fourteen years old. Uh, I was alone. I was sitting on the train. And I fell asleep, and when I woke up, someone just tried to do like, and yeah, I didn't remember anything after that. You and don't all, remember. And all, I re- mm, and, all, and all I remember is just, I woke up in the hospital. And you don't know how much and time you had, and you couldn't see anymore after that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How much time had passed? Did they tell you at the hospital how much time had passed? Mm, the doctor said it was three weeks. Three weeks? I had a coma in three weeks. And besides you losing your, some of your vision, was there any other um, damage to you or it was just your, your vision? Um, it's just my vision, actually. Uh, but I lost some of my stuff, uh, like my laptop, like my iPod, like my BlackBerry back then. Did you call the police? Did you ever find out what happened no. on the train? Mm. Uh, actually, the the train officer uh, tried to try to wake me up. Tried to woke me up back then, and uh, they still found my other phone other cell phone back then and they tried to call my mom and they asked me to uh, they asked my mom to uh, meet uh, me, uh, me, uh, me me when I fall asleep <laughs> if I should say that um, when, I, when I was um, unconscious uh, mm-hmm, unconscious um, uh, and they took me into a uh, hospital. And what do you think yeah. happened? Who do you think did this? What do you think happened on the train that day? Some of the informant, uh, some of the police told me that uh, it was a syndicate. Because back then, uh, there was three victims and I was the only survivor. So you're a lucky person. Yeah. Well, it's a blessing to have you here and it's a blessing to be able to listen to the music you write because you have a lot to say, Arif. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. Moving forward from there, you had some confusion, I imagine, for a period of time, right? Three weeks you were in a coma. Mm-hmm. And then for after those three weeks, you must have been so confused. Mm. Did your life yeah. flip upside down for you? Did you restart from that point with your life? How did you move mm-hmm. forward? Um, at the first time, um, actually, when I woke up back then uh, for about seven days, I didn't feel anything. Uh, I didn't feel anything like um, it just happened like... Uh, Mom, I want to eat. Mom, I want to do this. Mom, I want to do this. Or uh, maybe I called the nurse. And when... Uh, How did you when feel? Hus- did you feel confused? Mm-hmm. Did you feel lack of energy? Not so much energy? Did you feel like you could just lay in yeah. bed? And- <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's kind of... Um, it's kind of hard. Um because we don't have to talk about it. this <laughs> yeah uh but i'm uh but i'm willing to do um in the seventh day of my consciousness uh, in the seventh day when i woke up i just realized that i lost my startup sense because uh, back then i told uh, i said to my mom mom is this hospital out of uh out of lamp out of light you know and my mom just said what? Yeah, because it's so dark in here. And my mom called uh, the eye doctor and they told me that uh, I lost my sort of sense. Uh, and uh, uh, what was the cause? Really... Mm-hmm. What, what did the doctors say the cause was for the loss of sight? Mm-hmm. Um, they couldn't explain it uh, for sure at first, and they did some research, and they told me that the damage is in my eye nerves. So the poison affects my uh, my eye nerves exactly in here, and into um. Actually, it's just a. Uh, the 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 projection nerves so my eyes is actually normal but the nerve to project me to to, to project the side of sense to mm-hmm. the is actually damaged it's a nervous thing it's a mm-hmm. it's it's an internal from the nerves mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. understood okay and so moving forward from there you lose your sight your your vision completely changes what do you do from there? What happens from there? Mm, uh, at the first day when I realized that I lost my sort of sense, uh, I actually angry to God. Uh, it's like, oh, God, why did you take my sort of sense? Why don't you, why don't you take my life? Because I'm feeling worthless now. I'm feeling, I'm feeling like nothing. And... The other day, uh, when my that it's all God's plan. Maybe God has another plan for you. Maybe you didn't, you don't meant to be a chef. You don't meant to be a culinary business, but something, something bigger. You have to believe in it. And yeah, um, and back then when I listened to the music through the radio. I heard a story about Nick Vujicic. Have you heard of it? No. Nick Vujicic? Yeah, the one who didn't have uh, any legs and arms. And he's a great motivator now. And yeah, I feel ashamed that, oh, I still have my legs. I still have my arms. I still have my voice. Why don't I do something? And that's why I uh, decided to move forward. With the music. Yeah, with the music. And so how is your vision today? Has your vision improved? Does it stay the same? What is your vision like? Um, it's like, um, if I'm picturing, if, uh, if your eyes is a camera lens, it's kind of blurry. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of, what, uh, what should I call it? Bokeh effect. But, it got everything, you know, uh, 
it's I really understand. everything. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And so with the music, you were able to say, I don't need vision for the music. That, that, that comes from a different place. And I can go ahead and write music and nothing will stop me from there. Yeah, uh, I think so. Because uh, music is something to hear. Music is something to listen to. Music is something to feel. Music is not something you see. Because what you see is the singer, it's the band. Because, uh, yeah, it's how I connect to people. It's how you connect to the world. Mm-hmm. For me, music is everything. I mean, uh, when I lost my sight of sense, all I have, maybe, all I had back then is just my hearing. So my old friend is just, my only friend was just an old radio. And I heard a lot of music. And then I tried to sing and sing and sing. And uh, my mom realized that I'm not, uh, I have I have a really good voice for my in my mom uh, hearing <laughs> and yeah my mom took me to a uh, vocal class and without uh, still without my sort of sense i i went to the vocal class with my mom and i tried to start my career for being a wedding singer and back then i really find myself i really uh, enjoy myself like uh, uh, mom, I want to be a musician. Had you and this was? Had you ever had a job mm-hmm. before doing other things before deciding you wanted to be a musician, or was being a musician the only thing you were mm. going to want to do? Mm. I think music is the only thing I want to do until uh, the end of my time, because um, I've been through a lot of. Uh, variety of jobs oh what's the right words um yeah uh i've been a video editor i've been in uh i've been uh i've been a photographer and um i i had a lot a lot of job uh back then like being an actor being in film crew but the only answer is music. Music is always calling me. In every, in every free time I had, I just writing songs. I just write more songs. And I think, oh, uh, my calling is music. Music is calling me. So I need to go back to music. Now, what is your musical process like? Do you write music on a daily basis? Are you writing music in a journal? Are you singing to yourself wherever you go? How are you documenting your music and writing your music? Mm, I, write, uh, I write songs every day for my daily basis just to improve my writings in English. Uh, and I also write songs for um, uh, a couple of clients for my uh, for my fellow musician friends in Bali and also all over Indonesia, especially in Jakarta in uh, and in Padang. Uh, but for now, I also uh, proceed my career as a singer, uh, and I'm going to release uh, a new song uh, this month at the end of this month. Very nice. Can we release the name of the song, or are we going to keep that a secret for now? Um, it's called Unspoken. Unspoken. All right. And that will be releasing at the end of this month. Yep. Exactly oh. on 26th, March. March 26th. Yep. So can you walk me through the process of writing Unspoken and what that was like? Um, actually, sometimes I wrote songs for my own just by letting my feelings... Uh, Ask me, ask my logics to write the songs. Like um, when I'm feeling something, when I uh, felt something that really runs in through my brain. Like, oh, I'm in love with her, but I don't know what to say, but I don't know what to do. So that's why I wrote Unspoken. I fell in love with someone, uh, and I don't know what to do. I don't know how to introduce myself. I don't know how to uh, reach out to her. I don't know how to 
get her into me and get to know each other. So I wrote the song Unspoken. It's actually uh, the unspoken of my feelings. Uh, and then after I wrote the lyrics, I tried to I tried to compose uh, some of the notes. And when I heard about uh, R and B is going well this year, and that's when I decided to oh yeah uh, I want to be an R and B artist for sure. Because uh, back then I I tried almost every genre. Like uh, for instance, when I was a wedding singer. Um, some of my bands called me Indonesian Michael Bublé because when I sang Michael Bublé, they think that my voice is, sounds exactly like Michael Bublé. And, Very nice. Uh, yeah. And when I tried metal, uh, they, they found my, my own character in metal genre, in, the, in, in, the, in that genre. And when I tried Dangdut, it's actually original by Indonesian. Uh, it's the original Indonesian genre. Uh, I didn't find it. Uh, I didn't find it comfortable. So, so I went and went and went and try another genre and try another genre. And yeah, now I decided to be an R&B R&B musician. So. I tried to make the beat. I tried to mix things up, and yeah, it all happened like water flow. It's like flowing water. It just happened. You allow it to just flow like water for you. You allow it to just yeah. come out, and very, very nice. And it's very exciting. I think we're all looking forward to hearing that song. That's really awesome to hear you <laughs> say so. And the song is in English. Yep. Very nice. Okay. And so can I ask you this? Have you presented the song to this person you've written the song for? Have you uh, presented the song yet or not yet? <laughs> um, I, plan to, I plan to send it exactly on her birthday. Because actually, March 26th is my mom's birthday. And her birthday is actually not that far from my mom's birthday. Okay, very nice. And so you're going to present it to her. This song is specifically written for her. You, 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 it's not a song that you're writing about just your feelings, but it's like a, this is a love song to communicate how you feel about her. Yep. Very exciting. Very awesome, Arifo. It's very inspiring. And it's very, very inspiring to hear your story and your process. How, so you wrote the song from bottom to top. You said you were writing the notes, writing the lyrics. What was your process like mm -hmm. learning all of the, the musical notes and just the entire construction of a song? How did you go about doing mm. this? I don't know. I just did. It was like, um, like when I'm writing this, yeah, uh, when I wrote the lyrics, it was just like, oh, my feelings told me so, and my brains, oh, this could be the right word for this. This could be the right word for this. this you didn't be, struggle writing this. the song. It was that organic for you. That smooth. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's awesome. It, it just happened. <laughs> and so is the song almost complete? You say we'll be releasing it. Is the song completed mm -hmm. now? Will we, will we get a music video maybe? Yeah, uh, I've been working on the music video lately. Uh, actually, last week was the shooting process, and now is uh, now I'm entering the post production process uh, with my, with my some of my friends in Bali. Uh, actually, um, the music I already submitted the music to some of the stores. And it'll in and it will be ready for March twenty six. March twenty six. Okay, Arif, that's very exciting. How about for the rest of the year, for the remainder of the year? Can we expect maybe an album, some more songs, or are we going to keep that uh, a secret for now and announce later in the mm -hmm. year? 
Yeah, I've been working on something. I've planned to release an EP or album or single. I don't know yet, but I'm still working on it. Uh, I plan to uh, write an Indonesian song for my album. It's only one Indonesian song between maybe a couple of English songs in an album. I don't know yet, actually, but <laughs> but now I'm working on it. Now, why is it just one Indonesian song? Is this because you want to pay tribute to your heritage and write an Indonesian song? Or is it because how many songs would there be in total? Um, I don't know exactly how many songs uh, there will be in total. But um, actually, I want to be listenable uh, exactly in worldwide, you know. Because uh, English is uh, an international, uh, yeah, it's a universal language uh, now, um, and I feel more. I found it more comfortable when I wrote in English. You know, I can explore more and I can learn more about English. Because sometimes uh, my own language, my native language, is kind of tricky for uh, for the market. It's a specific market you would be uh, singing for and providing music for versus mm -hmm. in English, where it's mm -hmm. a universal language, you would want to appeal to larger audiences because you're writing it from your heart and from your soul and you want to communicate this to a universal audience and not just one audience. Exactly. Very nice. So now let's talk a little bit about when you're writing your music and how it's so easy for you to write your feelings. I think that's really interesting because it's not an easy thing for lots of people. When I ask you, it seems like it's such an organic thing and it just flows like water flow. I love that we've used that word, but it, it sounds like for you, it's easy. How is that possible for you to make it so easy? Are you not hard on yourself? Do you not make it difficult for yourself to produce music mm -hmm. and art, your, your artistry? Is it, are you very comfortable in your own skin to produce? to express yourself in an artistic way? Um, I don't think it's an artistic way, but, uh, but um, it just happened. Uh, the first time I wrote the song, uh, it's when I was in junior high school. Um, I fell in love with someone. I hate my childhood. I, uh, um, I had a broken family and I want a figure, uh, I want a dead figure. And that's when the first song came out, like, I want a dead. I want, uh, I want a real figure of dead. I don't want tons of males trying to be my dad, something like that. And uh, when I lost my set of sense, uh, I had a lot of things on my mind, but uh, I'm still not capable of writing. I still not. Uh, I still couldn't. Um, I still c can't writing. I I still can't write back then. So uh, it might be um, my inner so, voice. That it wasn't always to, easy. Yeah, it it wasn't always easy. Your inner voice said, "This is what we need to do for ourselves. This is calling to us." Exactly. And here you are now, writing music for a living and living the life, living the life of a musician. Very nice. And so it's, it's very interesting to hear that you went through your struggles and you worked through them, and now you're able to write your music and pursue your music. Now, let's talk a little bit about how your daily process is like. Uh, what does our reef do to get by day to day? What is your process like that keeps you motivated to take care of your music and your everyday life? Uh, sometimes I, I listen to hundreds of music every day. Uh, hundreds of uh, different genres, different singers, different uh, type of song. To just to do some research, just to uh, try to understand what people really want, what people really need in music. Is that just... just is in uh, is just a story or they want something from us they want some easy listening or they, they want some complex complicated chords or some stuff uh, so yeah uh, every day i listen to music uh, to try to understand uh, the market 
Very nice. And so what do you think it is that people want to hear? Do they want to be hearing these complex chord structures? Do you think they want a story? Do you think that they want feeling? What is it that people are looking for? Um, I think it's about their taste, based on taste. Uh, they usually uh, listen to jazz, then they love jazz. They might uh, listen to pop, but not as much as jazz. Uh, they love R&B. Uh, they, they love R&B. They listen to R&B so much, and they attend to listen to another genre, like indie, like uh, classic, but not as much. R&B. So, um, so for me, music is for everyone, but not every genre is for everyone. It's a taste thing. Mm-hmm. It's a tasting. But sometimes, um, when they feeling something, when they feel happy, uh, they want to listen to happy songs like "Happy" by Pharrell Williams because I'm happy, climb alone. If you feel, you know, you know what I mean. Based on their feelings, sometimes it's kind of tricky because uh, uh, human is kind of human is complicated. Uh, human behavior is complicated. We we cannot uh, judge the behavior. Oh, this guy is so happy, but there were times that uh, there where they are sad. There were times where they have uh, have broken heart. Yeah, have struggles. So Human beings are more complicated than just one thing. We can't just say this person is one thing all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's very awesome and very inspiring to hear you say that. I, I understand what you're saying 100%. I, I, I agree. I agree. And so for you, when you struggle and you go through these, these hardships, you go to music. You say, I'm going to listen to what is going to help guide me through the situation. You don't read books, you don't, it's not a quote, it's not, it's music. Exactly. Very nice, very nice, Arif. So you are a true musician. Hearing you speak, you, you, you're you the real deal. You, the, you, you live and breathe music. Now walk me through some of the genres you're listening to, because like you said, it's not just one thing. Now I know you say you're an R&B artist, but you must be taking mm-hmm. inspiration from, you know, maybe some classical, maybe some rock maybe some of your own Indonesian music, you know, a lot of mm-hmm. inspirations from different places. Um, maybe I should, uh, maybe, uh, maybe I will tell you uh, why I love music, why I want to be a musician, because that when that happened. Uh, I've heard a lot of music uh, uh, back then in 2010 when I lost my set of sense. Uh, and with the tune of the radio, uh, I had I heard a lot of uh, I listened a lot of uh, music uh, types like rock like uh, jazz but actually Michael Bublé is my first love in music you know when when he sang I heard a version called Home by Westlife but this one is oh my god who's this oh my god who's this I've been searching for uh, the original. Uh, I've been searching for the singer, and that's when I find, oh, this is Michael Bublé. I've heard of him. Uh, I've heard his, his song uh, called Haven't Met You Yet, but, I, but I've never heard Home. And that's why, um, and, and Home was my first vocal class uh, exercise. Um, I asked my vocal teacher to teach me uh, the song called Home. And that's the first time I fell in love with jazz. Not really jazz, pop, if I must say. Uh, uh, the first thing, uh, the first time I love, I fell in love with jazz is back in two thousand and ten to two thousand and twelve. And in two thousand and thirteen, I started to listen to metal. Metal of the local band. <laughs> uh, I tried to scream, I tried to get my vocals into metal, and in 2014, I tried to sing pop. And when I tried to sing, uh, it could be means I tried to listen all of the pop music, all of the metal music, all of the jazz music. 
um, when uh, uh, when it comes to 2015, I tried to sing dangdut. If you heard of dangdut, Indonesian dangdut. Um, and in 2010, and uh, in, in 2017, um, I went to an I went to a talent show called the Next Boy Girl Band in the Indonesian TV. And they asked me to sing Home by Michael Bublé. And that's when I back to music and that's when I uh, listened. Really? They asked you to sing Home by Michael Bublé without yeah. you yeah. communicating to them that this song mm -hmm. had meaning to you? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. That's insane. <laughs> and everything just rewinded for you. It's almost like a big life moment for you at that moment, 2017 at this Indonesian television uh, program. Yeah. What else can we say, Arif? Is there anything else you'd like to say? Would you like to say hello to anybody? Maybe any shout outs? Is there anything else you'd like to provide for our audience to move forward with this? Um, for our fellow musicians, maybe just, just don't stop believing. Don't stop believing in yourself. Don't stop, uh, don't stop working. Don't stop, uh, don't stop trying. Because uh, sometimes we don't know which time is our period, which time is our, our success uh, period. Because, uh, yeah, it's, it's unpredictable, but it will be true. It will come true. Your dreams will become true as soon as possible or maybe, yeah. <laughs> patience, do you think patience is the answer? Believe in... Yeah, yeah, but patience is the answer. Believe in your ultimate purpose and have patience. As long as you keep do uh, everything you could to put uh, to make your music as good as possible, as listenable as possible, uh, as long as you can create, don't stop believing. Now, Arif, how can we find you on the internet? How can we find you on social media? How can the audience find you? Mm, you can actually go to my Instagram at first. Uh, it's Uda Arif. It's U D A A R I F. And you can go to my YouTube channel. It's Arif Music. Uh, maybe you can find me in Spotify. It's dot Arif. Uh, Arif, all right. All right, Arif, it's been a great pleasure. I appreciate everything you've said today and, and offering your words, your wisdom, and, and your story, and it's all very inspiring. And we look forward to hearing your music and seeing future work. So let's get you on again in the future and follow up with you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for okay. your time. Thank you for your time, Arif. Thank you.